One look at this mangled van is enough to tell you the crash was a bad one. Five people were killed. No one should have survived, let alone a nine-year-old girl. But little Jocelyn did survive. She spent more than a month in the hospital recovering from her physical injuries. The emotional ones would understandably take much longer. But with no place to call home, no family, Jocelyn was in need of another miracle, this time in the form of a guardian angel. The CPS caseworker called and asked if we would take, if we had room for another child. Carl and Justina Sadler have opened their home through the years to nearly a dozen foster children. They were very surprised that she survived. So we said, sure, of course, we'll take care of her. But this time, they had no idea how much the scared little girl with big brown eyes and a battered heart would need them. And she just was crying in that back seat. She did not want to get out of the car. And she was just a mess in every way that I could think of. Every week, they would take her to different doctor's appointments to recover from her injuries. And over the next five months, the shy little broken girl began to heal. And the Sadlers began to love her. When they come to you, they're very, very hurt, sad. And um, so you just open your arms to them and see what you can do. But the Sadlers never expected what happened next. We start getting this humongous bills. Bills from the hospital, some in the hundreds, and then the thousands. All said, the bill totaled nearly $110,000. We called the caseworker and said, we've got this bill, so uh, we assume you're going to take care of this bill. And she said she would. And so the Sadlers waited and then called again and again. But they say Child Protective Services did nothing to intervene. And then things got worse. They start calling and calling, and now these days it's like, um, are there, uh, want to collect the money either way. So did CPS take care of it? It still hasn't taken care of it. The Sadlers say the uninformed hospital continued sending bills every month and threatening to send it to collections. It has to be protocol, and I can't imagine it being um, harass the foster parents until they pay. In Arizona, when you become a foster parent, you're not responsible for the child's medical or dental bills. Technically, they're still in the care and custody of the Department of Economic Security. And that means they're the ones that are responsible. Have you seen this hospital bill for $108,000? I have not seen that, no. Surprising? Um, it. I'm not aware of any bills going to foster parents. We sat down with Janice Mickens. She's the DES boss of the Children, Youth and Families Division. It was hard to get a straight answer. So is there a problem within the system? I, you know, I don't know that because again, I'm not familiar with this case. So somebody in your department knows about this mistake of a $108,000 bill. Somebody knows about it. Do I need to talk to somebody else? No, you're also dealing with, with a confidentiality issue. I'm not asking you about the foster child whose name is on this bill. I'm not asking you about her. I'm asking you about the bill that was sent to the foster parents. I can only tell you what um, the advice that we got in terms of responding about this particular situation. We asked over and over, how did this happen? We never did get an explanation. In fact, it wasn't until we called CPS that the Sadlers say the bill collector stopped. Even then, CPS refused to answer questions about the little girl's case. But what about next time? The next time another guardian angel comes along. For Jocelyn, she's since been placed with family members out of state. As for the Sadlers, it's been a rough road, nearly facing financial ruin and then having to say goodbye to the little girl who filled their lives with so much love. It was a very moving uh, experience, and we still, we're, we're still in contact with her. Uh, she hasn't forgotten us, and we won't ever forget her.